So in looking at these issues, the CEDA board noted that the political community agreed that budget should be brought back to balance. That did seem to be still a consensus view. And so we established a balanced budget commission to have a look at the issue. The high level commission draws together experts from the public sector, academia and the private sector and the full details of them are in the report that you have with you. So firstly, the commission's approach was to set the basic parameters. And the urgency of the issue meant that we set fiscal year 2019 as the target date to return to balance, the end of the current forward estimates. Now we can see no benefit in delay unless there is a significant change to Australia's overall economic performance. So this is our first key recommendation, 2019. The next was how to get there and in particular what were the respective roles of revenue and expenditure and for this the Commission looked to history and to long run averages. So using publicly available data, this translated into a need to raise, and these are important figures, an additional $15 billion in revenue in fiscal year 2019 and to cut expenditure by $2 billion. So the rest of the report set out to see how you could do that. Now raising an extra $15 billion is, we accept, no small amount and no small challenge. But we do believe that our suggestions have the best chance of gaining community consensus, but we accept they will not be painless. Nevertheless, you may be wondering, particularly the probing journalists in the room, as to whether our focus on the short-term fiscal solution and the acceptance that it will need to rely primarily on increased revenue appears in some way to be letting the politicians off the hook on long-term structural reform. But on the contrary, I would argue that it is about getting us to the strongest starting line for that endeavour. At the moment, I can see another political term drifting past because we haven't done this and we won't be any closer to fixing either the deficit or the long-term structural problems. Now, perhaps in more benign times, we may have accepted this, but we can no longer afford to do so as even if we balance the books in the short term, section five of our report reminds us that the long-term challenge of maintaining balance remains. The latest intergenerational report suggests that a deficit could likely reoccur beyond 2019 as expenditure is predicted to grow faster than GDP once more. And this is where I should say that we do see this report as focusing primarily on part one of the solution. Unapologetically, it focuses on the revenue side to get us to the tax cap of 23.9% and return us quickly to balance. Now, I will start by saying that our numbers are based on a variety of published sources. The aim of this exercise is to show that it is possible for government to balance the budget with measures that would, in most likelihood, win community consensus as part of an overall plan to fix the budget and which may broadly be acceptable over time to both sides of politics. Now, we believe that the series of measures we put forward are the most powerful and realistic that we could find to balance the budget in the short term in order to then clear the way to dealing with the longer term structural problems. So in short, I will summarise with these key points from our report. We are spending more than we are earning and we have been doing it for far too long. It is taking too long to get rid of the deficit and the current path to fiscal balance proposed by government is not believable. And while we need broader tax reform, that will be best done during periods of greater fiscal strength. 